for wretched blind Riches healing of the mind Yea, all I need in thee to find Lamb of God, I come and I come and I come and I come Well, good morning, Federated Church. Glad to have you here with us on a holiday weekend as we have a chance to worship together. And uh, as we talked about last week from First Peter, uh, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And we've been called out of darkness to declare uh, the praises of him who's called us into his light. So that's what we get to do. Declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's a privilege we have as believers on any given day, especially as we come together on Sunday to worship with God's people. So I want to encourage you to do that, to uh, uh, invite uh, the Lord to come and just allow you to fill you with uh, worship of him this morning and to worship him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength as we're reminded that God loves us and invites us to taste of his goodness as we're going to sing here in a minute. So we'll let you be seated for a minute to get your bearings, and then you can join us here in a minute. But here we go. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink all the water, there's no more Come all you sinners Come find his mercy Come to the table He will satisfy Taste of his goodness By what you're looking for For God so loved Believe 
will live forever. All right, let's stand up now and help us with this down. Bring your failures, bring your addictions. Here you go. Bring your failures, bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting with open this first verse. So ready, man? Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink all the water, come and thirst no more. All right, ladies, second verse. Here we go. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his Worship. You alone are worthy 
gather your people today. You've called us out of darkness into your glorious light, and we are your chosen people, a royal priesthood. We thank you that we could come together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and give you all of our praise, all of our worship. You're worthy of it, Lord. We thank you that we can gather here on this uh, Memorial Day weekend. We think of those who have served, who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we could stand here today and uh, freely worship you. And we thank you for that, Lord, for their sacrifice, for your grace upon us. Receive all of our praise today throughout this service, Lord. We thank you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thanks. You can be seated, and uh, keep your eye on the video screens. To the brave men and women who stood up for freedom, who answered the call. Take two, Doug. Is it going to be a while, Doug? Because if not, I can... Well, is it reloading? Okay. <laughs> Pastor Ed, why don't we ha hear from the adult choir? I'm thinking it's time for the adult choir. Yep. And we'll see if we get that loaded back up later. Leave it to technical difficulties. Here we go. and that is Memorial Day, right? And it's good that we remember, and we will shortly here. But um, as we prepare for our worship service and my message today, um, the Lord brought to my attention that two days ago was a very significant uh, Christian holiday, meaning a very special day in the Christian calendar. Anybody know what that was? Somebody had it in first service. What was it? Ascension Day. Very good. Yes, yes. Forty days after the resurrection of Jesus, he ascended. Okay? And he said something to his followers just before he left. He made a promise. And that promise was, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Jesus promised to give his people his Holy Spirit. And if you know the book of Acts, you know that ten days later, he kept that promise. And on that day, the Holy Spirit came, and he came as a gift from Jesus to his church. And you know what? He is still giving the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church. And in fact, today, as we talk about building better relationships in the church, 
The Holy Spirit really is the key to that because he fills each one of us and then he unites us because we're all in his spirit, right? Now, the Holy Spirit does some wonderful things in us individually, bringing us the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, all of those great things that he does within us. But he also does something very great with us together. The Holy Spirit is poured out and he gives gifts so that we can serve and uh, he gives us the power to be the witnesses that Jesus called us to be. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. We would like to begin this service as a choir by offering this song. It's actually a prayer to the Holy Spirit asking him to just come upon us individually and together and create a great hunger in the church and power that we can be in good relationship together, united together, so that people will see Jesus. That's our desire. Holy Spirit, living breath of God.
Holy Spirit does create new life in us, and uh, we want to sing about that, worship the Lord here, continue to worship the Lord for that new life that the Holy Spirit creates in us, gives us the power and the grace to love others deeply as we're going to hear today. We can't do that in and of ourselves, but with the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, we can love others in a deeper way than we've known before. And we can build our life around the love of Jesus Christ. We're going to sing that this morning, that as we've been loved, we're to love others as well. So we'll think about those as we sing these songs of worship coming up here. Oh, great God of highest heaven, Occupy my lowly heart. Own it all and reign supreme. Conquer every rebel power. Let no vice or sin remain that resists your holy war. You have loved and forevermore I was blinded by my sin had no ears to hear your voice did not know your love within had no taste for heaven's joy then your spirit gave Opened up your word to me Through the gospel of your Son Gave me endless hope and peace Would you stand with us now and sing this last word? Help me now Help me now to live a life That's dependent on your grace Keep my heart and guard my soul from the evils that I face. You are worthy to be praised with my every thought and deed. Oh, great God of highest heaven, glorify your name. You are worthy. Above every other name, 
Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open. today, all of our obedience, as we hear from your word. We thank you, God, that you have given everything for us, that you've placed your Holy Spirit within us so that we can live a new life, that we can love one another deeply, more deeply. Receive the praise as we try to act out on your word today with the help of your spirit. Thank you for these brothers and sisters that we can worship together with. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure you can be seated. Well, good morning. If there are any children here, you can go ahead and head to Kids Church right now. Um, and as they are going out, I want to encourage anyone that might be here that is new or maybe have been coming for some time and uh, haven't had the opportunity to fill out the connection card to go ahead and do that in one of two ways. Uh, the ushers are going to be coming down and passing the friendship lists uh, for the rows, the sign, and at the top of that, there are the actual physical connection cards. If you don't want to fill out a physical connection card, you can use your phone, and there's a QR code that is in your bulletin that you can just scan with your phone real quick, and the questions will populate uh, right to your phone, and you can fill that out. 
If you do fill out the physical card, you can either put it back in the friendship list or hold on to it and take it down to the Welcome Center desk. Uh, there's someone there that would love to say hi and introduce themselves, and they have a free gift for you. So we encourage you to uh, take advantage of that. A couple things that uh, we do want to make you aware of. There will be celebrations in a lot of towns for Memorial Day tomorrow. And one that we want to encourage you to go to is if you live in this area, the Springfield celebration and uh, the parade and service will be held like normal. I think they're meeting maybe at 1030 at the school for the kids to ride their bikes down to the Springfield Cemetery. And then there will be a service at 11, a memorial service uh, for, uh, you know, those that have passed. I have the privilege of praying during the service. Then Paul Merritt will be the one that will be speaking he assured me it will not be very long. Uh, he will give a, a shorter talk, but uh, it's something that we're looking forward to to celebrate those that have paid that sacrifice. So we want to encourage you guys to participate if possible. A couple things that we want to make you aware of as we finish up one sermon series uh, today, we are starting a new sermon series for the summer next week in Exodus. So we encourage you to grab the June uh, reading plan bookmarks at one of the doorways or down below at the Welcome Center desk. And you can start right away. We're going to be diving into Exodus this week. And for those that have ordered the book but have not picked it up, that is also at the Welcome Center desk. So make sure you make your way down to grab that. We're excited to be um, diving into that book for this summer and going through the first half of the book and really focusing on the redemptive story of Christ uh, in his uh, people and, and what that shows us and leading through in life. Next Sunday night at 5 o'clock will be the baccalaureate service for North, Northwestern High School. We encourage you to uh, participate in that for those that maybe have uh, family members that are seniors at Northwestern or if you want to just support the community and support the actual statement of faith that is being made, uh, that will be a great opportunity to do so. A couple events that we want to make you aware of that are upcoming on June 9th, we will have, uh, you see a picture of them. This is Adams Road Ministry. And they are, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, they're four siblings, correct? No, or they're not, okay, they're not four siblings. Two of them are. Two of them are. But they are individuals that were saved um, out of Mormonism. And they are following Christ now. And they do this full time where they tour around the country. And they give their testimony. And they share. And they also give a concert. And so it is free of charge, and you can come. There will be a free will donation, uh, but they have a great ministry. You can see the website. You can look into them a little bit more in the bulletin, but we encourage you to put some time aside for June 9th to uh, come to that and participate. Also, June 11th, as a reminder, we will be having our prayer Saturday, so we encourage you to sign up for that. It's those four hours. Uh, do what you need to in your schedule to uh, make it a point to be there for those, those four hours. And if you have someone in kindergarten through sixth grade, you can still sign up for child care during that time um, up until next Sunday. So we encourage you to sign up for child care if you need it and also sign up to actually attend so we can be prepared with material at the Welcome Center desk. The last thing that we want to talk about is... June 26th, we are doing our service in the park again. We did it this last summer. It was a great time of fellowship and worship, and it was really a good chance to come together as a church for one service July 4th weekend. We're doing it June 26th this year, so a couple things to pray for right away. The first thing is pray for the weather, okay? If it rains and it's terrible, we'll just move it inside here, and that's, that's fine. God has a plan, but we would love to be able to do it at the park with a lot of the activities and the food and everything that we have planned. The second thing is be intentionally praying on who you should invite. We're going to have this be a little bit more of an outreach focus this year. And so we want to encourage you now to be praying through and having conversations with those people in your life that maybe are far from God but might come to a service in a park opposed to I'm never going to walk into a church building. Okay, and so pray about who it is that God wants you to invite and take advantage of that. Now we're going to have a missions update from Rick. Thanks, Mel. And Doug, if that video is going to play, I'll, we'll do it right after this. If not, you can let me know. I want to bring you an update on a, a new person we just added to our, our mission list. And uh, name's already over there on the board. <clears throat> In the past couple of years, we've tried to <clears throat> more and more 
support nationals, people who are born and raised in countries. We want to get uh, the gospel especially supported in uh, the harder to reach places of the, of the world, and uh, nationals are the best uh, people to do that because they were born there, they're raised there, they know the culture, the customs, the language. So uh, we send uh, a lot of word out to missionaries who already support to say, hey, do you know a, a really promising national in your own country who just needs some support, maybe needs to go to Bible school, whatever. But those are the, we really want to get behind <clears throat> more and more nationals. Uh, Jason Walpley, who some of you may know, was working with Campus Crusade, was here about a year, year and a half ago. He is now transitioned out of Crusade, Campus Crusade, but uh, he gave us good contact of a guy he met when he was over in South Asia who was doing a good work, and uh, so we started corresponding with uh, this young man, Joseph, and uh, it's led to us uh, beginning to support the ministry that he has in South Asia. Uh, because of the sensitivity of where he's working, his name, and all that. We just, since we live stream, we can't tell you a lot of details. More and more, that's the way it is. But uh, I'm going to give you a chance to get some more information on him here in a minute. But uh, Joseph was uh, uh, raised uh, in a Hindu family, and he was very ill at age 15. As he says in his letter, he was near death's door, at the mouth of death. And uh, there were some local uh, pastors going through his village, they offered to pray for him, lay hands on him, and uh, he was miraculously healed from uh, whatever disease he had at that time that was about to take his life. And when he was healed, he said he, said he wanted to know more, more about God, and these pastors introduced him uh, to Christ, and he committed at that time. He said, I'm going to serve whoever, whoever that is. I'm going to serve that God for the rest of my life. And so he's worked his way up actually through Campus Crusade, which is in this country, and so he's on the uh, on their uh, team, the crew team, and uh, so we're just coming alongside and supporting him as well. He's a young man in his early 30s, has a wife, a child. But if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to know his story, and if you'd be interested in praying, becoming a prayer partner with him, uh, we're supporting him already as a church. You may want to do that individually. That's up to you. But we're looking always for prayer partners. Uh, we want to financially support people, but we always want to get prayer partners behind these missionaries. So um, I think there's still some left over on that table there, Mal, is there? If not, okay, no? No, I'll make some more before the end of the service because a couple of people took them. I, his story's here, his newsletter's here, and we'd love to get more people uh, rallying behind him. So I'll make a few more before the service is over. And uh, you come alongside of Joseph. And uh, thank you for continuing to give the missions. It continues to allow us to uh, find more nationals that we can support. And we're all about that. So now I think we're going to see that video. Are we, Doug? We'll find out in a minute. Here we go. To the brave men and women who stood up for freedom who answered the call and fought for our nation, who paid the ultimate price and never came back. To the American soldier, we thank you. To the mothers and fathers who raised a hero, to the brothers and sisters with an empty space, to the sons and daughters who have only memories, to the wives and husbands who bear the void with pride, to all who've lost a soldier they love, no gift could repay your sacrifice, no tribute could match our admiration, no word can contain our gratitude, but still it deserves to be said, we remember you, we salute you and we honor you today. I like that verse from Romans because it says hey, give honor to where honors do, respect to where respect is due. And uh, we want to encourage you to do that even tomorrow, especially in your own local communities. As Mel's already said, we have our own service down here 
at the Springfield Cemetery. I encourage you to join us if you don't have any others at 11 o'clock. Uh, but we want to recognize those who have served our country, and unfortunately, some of those are on the backpack trail today. We have about 50 fathers and sons out on the backpack trail, so uh, hopefully they're standing. Actually, they're in pain right now, probably, but uh, hopefully they're in good shape. But if you've served our country in any way, uh, would you please stand so we can know who you are, served in any of the armed forces? Anybody here? Would you, if you've done that, would you stand? I've got Tim here. I've got a number. Could we please honor these people among us and thank them? No, wait, remain standing, because here's the clue. Now you get a chance to thank them personally, because we're going to allow everybody to stand and greet one another and thank these people who maybe you don't know. Introduce yourself and say thank you, and remain standing, because then we're going to read scripture. But greet some people and say thank you to these people. As you remain standing, and uh, we're going to read from the scriptures this morning from 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. If you want to look that up, you can. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. It'll come up on the screen. My son Brennan's going to read verses 7 through 9. He'll read that, and then you join together at verses 10 and 11. Here we go, 1 Peter 4. Okay. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated. Just before I begin, um, one of the people who could have stood up for us to recognize is our children's ministry director, uh, Ron. And uh, the reason why he couldn't stand up here is because he's serving our children. And we greatly appreciate him. Uh, but I bring this up to just alert you, when you get your prayer list uh, today, you'll see that uh, Ron's father passed away down in Florida. And um, so we're praying for Ron and his family um, because of family being spread out all over the country and um, because of the weather in Florida right now, which we all think it's marvelous, but it's pretty hot and miserable down there right now. So the family has already elected to do something in the fall. Um, so right now, though, let's, uh, let's take a moment to pray for our brother Ron, can we? Lord, as we uh, take a moment to uh, remember with gratitude all those who have served, many, many who have given their lives, we are thankful for those uh, in our midst who have served, and uh, we're especially thankful today for our brother Ron. God, thank you for bringing him to our church and his family. And glory to you for the ministry that he is leading here and touching so many, many lives. Lord, you know Ron needs your comfort now, as well as his mother and all of the family. So would you give that comfort, Lord, as only you can, through the power of your Holy Spirit. And would you bless Ron and his family in the days ahead as they continue to serve and in a while uh, do the grieving together that needs to be done. And now guide us, Lord, as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Of all the relationships that we've been working on making better this month, 
Today's relationship is one that I've been working on making it better my whole life. Unlike my relationship with my wife and my family, which began when I was 25 years old, and unlike my relationship in the workplace, which began when I poured my first mug of root beer at the White Turkey Drive-In at the age of 16, my relationship with the church began when my mother brought me here in her arms when I was one year old. And it really didn't start off too well. When my mother tried to put me in the nursery right back there, I put up such a hissy fit that she turned around and took me home. And she fully intended to keep me there until I could learn to behave. Fortunately, a wise woman named Ida O'Connor admonished my mother and said, you need to be in church and so does he. So bring him with you into Our Lady's Sunday School class. That's where my relationship with the church began. And I've spent my whole life trying to make my relationship and other people's relationship with the church better. And that's what I'm going to try to do today. To help everyone here and everyone who's listening in the Welcome Center or at home to build better relationships in the church. How would you describe your relationship with the church? Do you see these people as brothers and sisters and your church is your family? Or do you feel like a pastor friend of mine who said to me, church would be great if it wasn't for the people? I laughed just like you did when he said that, but I understood what he meant. Every church, including this one, is made up of people who are sinners saved by grace. But even though we're saved, we are not perfect. And we say things and do things that are sinful. And as a result, many people have been hurt by their church. Recently, my wife Connie talked with a young man in our neighborhood in Erie who grew up in a church in Erie. Connie asked him, how are things going at your church? He said he and his family were not involved anymore. Well, why not? Because he said he got a note from the church asking why he hasn't been sending in his tithe. And then he said what I've heard many people say about the church. All they want is your money. That's one of many reasons that people give to excuse themselves and to stay away from church these days. And the numbers of people who are staying away is on the increase, especially since the pandemic. 20 years ago, 69% of Americans were at least affiliated with a church. You know what the percentage is today? 47% and dropping, especially among young adults. So what can I say to help all of us build better relationships in the church? Better yet, what does Jesus have to say to encourage us? It's his church, you know. He said, I will build my church. So what is his word to us about building better relationships in the church? To help us understand what Jesus wants us to do, I'm going to ask two questions about building better relationships. Number one, why do we need to? And number two, how do we do it? Those two questions are on the back of your bulletin with spaces to fill in the answers from God's Word. 
in case that helps you. Here we go. Why do we need to build better relationships in the church? I find three answers in God's word. And the first one may surprise you. It's because these relationships are forever. Did you hear how our scripture began when Brennan read it? 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of all things is near. Do you know what Peter's talking about? He's talking about the end of all things on this old earth. When Jesus returns and brings in a new heaven and a new earth, Peter says that it's near. And if it was near back then, it's nearer now. Isn't that good news? But do you know what's included in the end of all things? All of the relationships that we've had here on this old earth, except one. All of the marriages, all the families, all the relationships that we've had with unbelievers in our workplace and community, they're all important. We need to work very hard on them and make them better in order to bring glory to God and bring as many people as possible to faith in Jesus before the end. But these relationships are all for here and now. There's only one relationship that is forever. And all of these others are going to be immersed into. And that is our relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. This is why the Apostle Paul prays for the church in Ephesians 3. He writes, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name, and then he prays that the church will be strengthened with power through the Holy Spirit and rooted and established in the love of Christ and filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And then look at how Paul ends his prayer. To him, God, be glory in the church and Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Do you see it? We are going to give glory to God as brothers and sisters in Christ forever. That's why we need to build better relationships in the church now. Or if you want to look at it a little crassly, we're going to be with each other forever. Shouldn't we try to learn to get along now? Second reason why we need to build better relationships in the church is connected with what Pastor Rick taught us last week. It's because these are crucial for our witness to the world. Pastor Rick challenged us last week to build better relationships with non-believers in our workplaces and communities so that we can bear witness of our faith and people will come to believe in Jesus. This is a responsibility that we all have, each one of us, to be witnesses for Christ. But do you know what? It's a responsibility that we all have together to give a united witness. You know how Jesus said that people will come to believe in him? Look at his prayer on the night before he was crucified. John 17, 21. I pray for those who will believe in me that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I in you. May they be brought to complete unity so that the, church, the world may believe that you have sent me. Do you understand what Jesus is praying? He was praying that his church would be united, that his people would work on their relationships with each other and settle any disputes or conflicts between themselves so that people outside of the church would see and believe. He was praying for his church that whenever anyone said or did something that was hurtful, they would repent and forgive and be reconciled so that people outside the church would see how we love each other and be drawn to believe in the God who loves us so much that he sent Jesus. 
This is why we must build better relationships in the church because it's crucial to our witness to the world. And this is why Paul got after the church in Rome. They were disputing among themselves about what kind of food you could eat or what day they should call the Sabbath. And Paul has some pretty strong words for them, and we're going to look at those in just a few moments. But right now, look at his prayer for them. Here's how it ended. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Jesus Christ so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see it? <clears throat> then there's one more reason why we need to build better relationships in the church. We need to do it because these relationships are forever. We need to do it because they're crucial for our witness to the world. And because these are crucial for our survival in the world. Have you noticed that things are getting worse in the world as the end draws near? If you haven't, you haven't had your eyes open. Are you aware that even in this country with its great history of respect for Christianity, that more and more people are rejecting Jesus and his church? This is exactly what Jesus said would happen. He said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. In this world, you will have trouble. That's why a football coach in the state of Washington who prayed on the field at the end of the game just by himself was fired. That's why a cake maker in Colorado who refused to compromise his convictions about God's design for marriage was shut down by the state government. And even though the Supreme Court ruled in his favor, he is still being harassed. And that's why on May 3rd, the day after the leaking of the opinion draft from the Supreme Court that may possibly overturn Roe versus Wade, 13 pro-life college students who knelt and prayed in front of the Supreme Court building were surrounded by hundreds of pro-abortion protesters shouting, Get out of here! We all hate you now! Do you know how these people and many more like them are surviving these attacks? By the grace of God, for sure, but I submit also by the support of their brothers and sisters in Christ. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi in the first century and he encouraged them in the face of much opposition to stand strong together. He wrote, whether I come and see you or only hear about you, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. Friends, we need to build better relationships in the church because the world is getting more and more hostile towards Jesus and his church and we need each other to survive. So how do we do it? How do we build better relationships in the church? Like I said, I've been at this my whole life. And I've seen many relationships get better, but I've also seen some get broken. In the two churches that I've served for over 50 years now, 
I've seen many people come into the church and find their forever family, but I've also seen plenty of people get hurt or angry and they walk away from the church. They break off the relationship with their brothers and sisters in Christ that are crucial for our witness to the world and crucial for our survival in the world until Jesus comes. But friends, this is not what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus is building his church with sinners who have come into a relationship with God by grace through faith. And listen, if you are in a relationship with God by grace through faith, you are in relationship with his family, the church. Jesus and his church are like love and marriage. You can't have one without the other. So if your relationship with the church has caused you some hurt, the solution is not to break it off. The solution is to make it better. And in our scripture, Peter shows us four ways to do it. Okay? Here we go. Four ways. I'll go real fast. Number one, pray for one another. Pray for one another. After Peter writes, the end of all things is near, he writes, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. The first and most important thing we must do until Jesus returns is pray. And based on the rest of these verses, I believe Jesus, through Peter, is urging his readers to pray for each other. They were living in a world that was hostile to Jesus and his church, just like we are. They needed to pray for each other to be unafraid, just like we do. And they were sinners saved by grace, just like we are. So they needed to put into practice the truth of James 5.16. Look at it. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now we typically use this verse to encourage prayer for the healing of our bodies. And we should. But I believe it also applies to the healing of relationships. Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. In other words, don't break off the relationship. Make it better by confessing your sins and praying for each other. I've seen this happen, friends. Many years ago, a brother in this church got upset with me the way that I was leading our church at that time. So he left our church. Thankfully, he went to another church, so he didn't leave the church or the faith. But the fracture of our relationship was hurtful to me, to our church, and to him. But I still prayed for him, and I'm sure he prayed for me. And one day he called me. He called me to come and visit him in the hospital. He was very sick. And he, he wanted to apologize for his attitude and his actions. And he asked for forgiveness. I gave it gladly. And we prayed together and our relationship was restored. Not long after that he died. And I am so looking forward to seeing him when Jesus comes. To build better relationships in the church we need to pray 
pray for each other. And may I say, I have been so blessed to hear how many of you are doing that. I hear it every Wednesday night in our prayer meeting. I hear it in my Sunday school class where we always begin by praying for each other. I even see it happening before and after services right here. People sharing together and praying for each other. Several of you did that during the pandemic over the telephone. Bless you. Many of you will be doing it on the prayer Saturday, on June 11th, as you pray for yourselves and others who are going through desert experiences. The more this church prays for each other, the better our relationships will be with God and each other. Second way that Peter shows us how we can build better relationships is to love one another. Look at verse 8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Have you noticed throughout this month on building better relationships that every message has stressed the importance of love? <laughs> of course. That's because love is the key to every relationship. It's the key to our relationship with God. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love is also the key to our families. It's the key to our relationships in the workplace, in the community. Jesus said, love your neighbors yourself. But on the night before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus gave a new command that was specifically for his church, his followers. He said, Love one another as I have loved you. So love is the key to our relationships with each other in the church. But Peter says it can't be a shallow, conditional love that says, I love you if you treat me nicely. Or, I love you if you agree with me on everything. Hmm. -mm. It's got to be a deep love that says, I am committed to you as my brother or sister in Christ no matter what. Even if you do something or say something that hurts me, I am going to keep on loving you. And it won't just be with words. It'll be with acts of love. Like the Bible says in 1 John 3.18, let us not love in words or tongue, but with actions and truth. And may I say again, this is the kind of love I have seen in this church my whole life. Love never fails went up on the wall back here when I was a child. It's still here. And you know what it means? It means that we never give up on each other. Love never fails. We're not perfect. We still sin against God and each other. But we've learned to apologize and forgive and be reconciled to one another, as I illustrated a moment ago, instead of walking away from the church. We've learned to love one another. Dottie, what did your son Calvin say? And Pastor Rick's grandson say, as you pulled into the parking lot this morning. He said, oh, my veteran church. <laughs> Isn't that great? How old is he? He's three. three years old. Ah, oh, my federated church. Calvin. What a man. We've also learned to welcome one another. This is what Paul told the church in Rome to do. I said a moment ago I was going to talk about the disputes that were going on in their church. Well, they were fighting with each other over different opinions about food and the Sabbath. Some of the church 
were Jewish Christians who held on to the Old Testament laws about clean and unclean food, and they held on to the fourth commandment, literally, about the Sabbath. But other members of the church were Gentile Christians who believed that they were free to eat whatever they wanted and free to meet whenever they wanted. Both groups thought they were right and the other group was wrong. Can you imagine that? And they were judging and condemning each other for their different opinions. So to both groups, Paul wrote these stern words. Welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Do you know what Paul was telling them? He was telling them to stop judging and condemning each other and instead accept each other as brothers and sisters in Christ with different opinions. He was telling them to put aside their different opinions and be united for the same purpose. And what is that purpose? For the glory of God. Peter expresses the same idea of welcoming each other when he wrote in verse 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. They did not have church buildings back then. They met in their homes. So Peter is saying, open your homes to each other and don't sit around grumbling over your different opinions. Unite together to glorify God. This too is what I've always appreciated about the Federated Church. We've had many different opinions about many different issues. But somehow we've always managed to accept each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. A handful of you here remember when I came home from Chicago in the early 70s with hair a lot longer than I have now. And there were a few folks who wondered about me. But you know, 99% of the people welcomed me home. Now, I'm sure they were relieved when I went up to Hal's Barbershop in Girard and got trimmed up. But they lived up to a motto that used to be on one of the license plates that we had here decades ago. Federated Church, a welcome waits you here. When we began to expand and remodel our buildings in the 90s, culminating in this new sanctuary five years ago this fall, I know there were many different opinions about it. But you know, we united here to glorify God. And that's what we're still doing. That's what we just did here this morning under Pastor Rick's leadership. In these past two years, we've all had different opinions on issues like masks and vaccines and how to meet together safely. But you know what? We've never judged or condemned anybody who disagrees with us. We've welcomed each other to worship in the sanctuary or in our homes. To build better relationships in the church, Peter tells us to pray for one another, love one another, welcome one another, and we're down to the fourth one. Serve one another. Can you read verse 10 again with me up on the screen? 
Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. The best way to build better relationships in the church is to serve. I've been in the church my whole life, and I've seen many people come in and many people go out. But the key to getting a person to stay in a church is to help them find their gift and put it into use in a ministry. When you get involved in a ministry, you build relationships with the other people in the ministry. You serve together. And you know what? It's fun. One of the greatest joys of my life in the church has been seeing people serve together. Second Tuesday of every month, I see the senior center team serving. And they're having a riot. I've had the privilege of serving with the praise choir and the praise band. And we may look pretty serious when we're singing or playing our instruments. But trust me, we're having a great time. And if you don't believe me, come to one of our rehearsals. And whenever I see the children's ministry team on Sunday nights or the student ministry team on Wednesday nights, I always see smiles on their faces. And it isn't because I'm seeing them at the end of the ministry night and they are so excited about getting out of here. No, I'm seeing them beforehand. There's joy. There's joy in serving the Lord together. If you're one who has not yet discovered your gift and found your ministry, I want to help you. I want to urge you to come to our membership class the next time we offer it, in September. But don't even wait for that. Don't hesitate to join a ministry team and try serving it's the best way to build better relationships in the church. And why do we do it? Why do we serve? Peter tells us in verse 11. Would you pull that up and let's read that one together again. Can we? If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. This is why we serve one another, not just to build better relationships, but to glorify God. And this is why we need to pray for one another and love one another and welcome one another, not just to build better relationships, but to bring glory to God. This is what Jesus wants us to do both now and forever. So, let us pray and love and welcome and serve our brothers and sisters in Christ so that Paul's benediction will come true in our church. And here's what it is. To him, God, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Would you stand? Give you just a moment to pray. Suggest we each ask God, what do you want me to do with this message? And then I would encourage all of us just to pray for our church. Lord Jesus, all glory, praise, and honor be to you. Thank you for creating your church. Thank you for building your church. Thank you for blessing your church with the gift of the Holy Spirit.
Lord, pour out your spirit anew on your church today and help us to pray and love and welcome and serve one another for your glory until you come. And then thank you for the anticipation that we'll get to do that forever. I pray this in your great name, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Blessings, everyone. Say